Gang, let's read our first story. Okay. Let's read our first story from Real War Stories number two, published in 1991. And this story is War is a Racket. Okay. Written as a book by General Smedley Butler until like a decade ago, the most decorated Marine in US history. And he wrote the book in the 1920s, I believe. We did a reading of it. And I'll have the link in the description of this video once it's been uploaded to Sensor to Bitchute and Rumble. So if you're watching this reading, if you want to have a read through the book, we did an audio reading of it. Uh, and it is available on SoundCloud as well as an audio book where I ended up reading the entire book. And you can find the book for free online. It is one of the most important books uh, in history. It's a, it should be this book, War is a Rocket by General Smith B. Butler, should be mandatory reading in every high school in the United States and Canada and the Western world, really. And it should be mandatory reading every year, in my opinion. Okay, grade 8, grade 9, grade 10, grade 11, and grade 12. And I think every year kids should have to read this book and write an essay about what its implications are. Now this version, and as far as I know, this is the only version of this comic book uh, of Wars of Racket in comic book format, was adapted by Joyce Brabner. And Joyce Brabner is the widow of the author of American Splendor. And she was a activist, anti-war activist, peace activist. The art is by Wayne Van Sant, and he was a Vietnam War veteran, and he wrote a lot of uh, he's done a few different comic books um, regarding war and he was a peace activist as well right uh, the letters is by Diane Valentino and colors is by Sam Parsons okay. that's one of the longer intros regarding a comic book uh, because we're gonna be snipping this out out of the live stream and uploading it as an individual um, story okay Let's have a read through this. Let's have a read through this. And that's General Smedley Butler, I believe, right? Should be, looks like him. Newton Square, Pennsylvania, 1934. General Butler, the taxi couldn't get through. Glad to see you, my wife's got donuts and hot coffee in the mess hall for reporter john Spe spevak it was a story of a lifetime an interview with major general smedley butler usmc retired the first u.s commander in this century to have done 12 separate tours of duty in central america and the first man to have been twice awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor, the highest military decoration his country could bestow. There are things I've seen, things I've learned that should not be left unsaid, General Smedley Butler states. I don't want to mislead you. Some people will tell you I write for a communist magazine the reporter says so the, who the hell cares there wouldn't be a United States if it wasn't for a bunch of radicals he says I once heard of a radical named George Washington as a matter of fact for what I read from what I've read he was an extremist, a goddamn revolutionary, revolutionist. Smedley Butler says, I was 16 when they sunk the Maine. 
back to join the Marines, he says. War is a racket. War is a racket. I spent 33 years and four months in active service as a member of our country's most agile military force, the Marine Corps. I served in all commission, commissioned ranks from a second lieutenant to major general. And during that period, I spent most of my time being a high class muscle man for big business, for Wall Street and for the bankers. In short, I was a racketeer for capitalism. I suspected I was just part of a racket at the time. Now I am sure of it. Like all members of the military profession, I never had an original thought until I left the service. My mental fa uh, faculties remained in suspension, suspended animation while I obeyed the orders of the higher ups. This is typical of everyone in the military service. I helped make Mexico and especially Tam uh, Tampico safe for American oil interests in 1914. I helped make Haiti and Cuba a decent place for the National City Bank boys to collect revenues in. Look at all the dead bodies. We supervised elections in Haiti, and whenever we uh, supervised them, our candidates always won. I helped in the raping of a dozen Central American republics for the benefit of Wall Street. I helped purify Nicaragua for the International Banking House of Brown Brothers in 1909 to 1912. I brought light to the Dominican Republic for American sugar interest in 1916. I helped make Honduras, Honduras's, Honduras right for American fruit companies in 1903. In China, in 1927, I helped see to it that Standard Oil went its way unmolested. Looking back, looking back, I feel I might have given Al Capone a few tips. The best he could do was to operate his racket in three city districts. We Marines operated on three continents.
on guard. Citizen soldier back in court for Agent Orange vets. Our boys were sent off to die with beautiful ideals painted in front of them. No one told them that dollars and cents were the real reason they were marching off to kill and die. The Econ Economy Act, passed by Congress in 1933, demanded that Spanish American, Spanish American war veterans furnish legal proof that their dis disabilities were incur incurred while in the service. Thirty-five thousand AO vets died treatment, denied treatment by VA hospital, not service connected. High-tech training, a myth. Study confirms 50% of all military jobs have no civilian counterparts. Men were taken off the pension rolls, ousted from hospitals, and told to shift shift for themselves. Employment Center. State Office. People have been led to believe that Congress is lavishing its paternal care upon every ex-serviceman including the veterans veteran who has acquired flat feet pounding the pavement in search of a job Free to 90s cutbacks close VA doors to low income vets. They will tell you that any veteran who breaks his leg in an automobile, automobile accident only suddenly needs his uh, tonsils removed. Simple simply has to go to a government hospital to get the necessary treatment at the expense of the taxpayer. As a result of disclosures of World War I intrigues, men and women have been endeavoring to chart new paths towards peace. Our neut neutrality measures prohibit the ex export of the rifles, ammunition, and other products to nations at war, but there are, there are ways and means of evading such embargoes. Machine guns can, as they have been in the past, shipped as sewing machines. Cannons can be camouflaged as locomotive parts and with the necessary bribes placed aboard ships. They're arming people. Four veterans fast to protest Central American policy.
Veterans for Peace. I wonder who these are. Is that General Smedley Butler testifying in Congress, in the Senate? In July of 1932, over 20,000 veterans and their families marched on Washington and camped on the edge of the Capitol to protest the failure of Congress to honor America's pledge to its fighting men. We let Hoover know prosperity was not just around the corner. In 1933, the mortality rate among World War vets was three times as great as among those who had stayed at home. of war. Boys with a normal viewpoint had been taken out of the fields and offices and factories and put into the ranks. There they were remolded they were made made over they were made to about face to regard murder as the order of the day they were put shoulder to shoulder and through mass psychology they were made into machines for slaughter we trained them to kill other men with n nonchalance and dispatch we used them a couple of years Then suddenly we discharged them and told them to make another belt face. Only this time they had to do their own re readjusting without mass psychology, without officers' aid and advice, without nationwide propaganda. We turned them loose without three minute speeches, without parades. Many, too many of these fine young boys were eventually destroyed mentally because they could not take that final about face alone. The war racket can be stopped. You know the death and the and misery I've seen in my lifetime need not be repeated over and over again from generation to generation. You veterans listening to me now, it's up to all of us to do the best we can to prevent yet another generation of war veterans from existing. We must put ourselves out of existence my friends future generations will praise us if we do and damn us to hell if we fail
1985, General Smedley Butler was again honored by his country when a group of veterans working for peace organized themselves as the Smedley Butler Brigade. the next story citizen soldier war is a racket by general smedley butler right wow 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 